Today we are going to take a look at how to use your mind to control sound in Ableton Live. No programming skills needed. I bought this headband from Interaction last year while I was prescribed to practice meditation to deal with some anxiety issues. It's great for interactive meditation and also great to collect data for art and music projects. This is the Muse One, it's older than the last version available but also less expensive. This headband is a personal EEG device that reads your brainwaves. Normally it works through Bluetooth with a meditation app from Muse that gives you biofeedback through your earphones. Muse will take a snapshot of your brain in an active state. So how does it work? This is the headband. As you see, the sensors are in the front of the band and two behind the ears. These sensors are in charge of picking up your brainwaves. I apply a bit of water to the electrodes to improve the contact and get a better signal. Then you fit it carefully around your forehead and ears and try to adjust it as tight as you can so your skin touches all the sensors. This device is picking up the brainwave patterns from your brain and with the Muse app they have an algorithm that determines when you're calm and focused to help you be in a meditative state. But we are not going to use the Muse app. Instead, we will translate those brainwave patterns into data, and then use the data to control instruments and effects in Ableton Live. In order to collect the data, we can use the free app called MuseDirect. In my case, I can't since I use Windows 8 and it's only available for Windows 10. So I'm going to explain an alternative method, which I find better since it's compatible with any version of Windows and Mac. So I'm going to send the data through the third-party app called Muse Monitor. First, I downloaded it from the App Store. It's also available in Google Play and Amazon, depending on what device you have. It costs 14 US dollars, but luckily it's a one-time payment. You can visualize, record, export data into Dropbox, and stream through an IP. The app will allow us to have access to real-time EEG graphs and at the same time to stream the data over Wi-Fi to your Mac or PC. So we turn on the headband and let the app make the connection. Don't forget to turn on the Bluetooth of your device, otherwise it would not work. Once we are connected, the brainwave will display it right away. This graphic represents all the sensors from the headband and will indicate if the connection is good or you need to move a bit the headband to make it better. Here we have different parameters of visualization. The gyroscope and accelerometer and the individual brainwave frequency graphs, which interest us the most. We have alpha, beta, gamma, delta, theta. Brainwaves that have been studied for years to help identify different mental states. They are measured in hertz. The standard unit of measurement used for measuring a frequency. Hertz is commonly used to measure wave frequencies such as sound waves, light waves and brain waves. If you are familiarized with the sound wave theory, you will find here a lot of resemblance to the brain wave signal. Since frequency is measured in cycles per second, 1 Hertz equals 1 cycle per second. Delta is the slowest. It oscillates approximately between 0 and 4 Hertz. Delta has a slow pace. It could be fine once per second and is related to sleep. Theta is 4 to 8 Hertz and is associated to the transition from sleep to waking or the transition between delta and frequencies such as alpha and beta. Alpha is between 8 to 13 Hertz and is associated to meditation. Beta is between 13 and 30 Hertz and could be related to anxiety. Gamma are then the fastest of all. There is a lot of info that you can read on the internet about neuroscience. The next step is to stream to another IP address on the same Wi-Fi network. We go to settings and we check which IP appears on the OSC stream target IP. Here you need to enter your IP network address. 
If you don't know it, to find it in Windows is pretty simple. You have to open the command prompt in Windows. Type cmd in the start menu and then ipconfig in the command prompt. And under IP before we find our IP. So mine is 192.168.04. I need to write this number into the Muse monitor settings. Also in the next option we see that it's transmitting through the port 5000. Everything looks ready to transmit on this side. To receive this data we are going to use Ableton Live along with a Max for Life patch called Museport that you can buy for $8 from To The Sun. Museport is an interface device that collects the data from the headband directly into Ableton Live. It captures the five brainwave frequencies along with three axes of accelerometer data, blink and joke lens detection. They can all be mapped to control any Ableton Live parameter. These are Max for Life devices. They require Ableton Live 9.1 suite or newer, or at least a trial of Max MSP 6.1 or newer. If we download the plugin, install it and open it. Here we go. We are ready to receive the data. To start sending, we press streaming in Muse Monitor. We need to check that the port is the same in the Max patch and in the Muse Monitor settings. In my case is 5000. When we see the battery advice graphic here in the plugin, it means that we are correctly connected. Next, we click on the Muse port logo in the top left to see the settings of the plugin. We need to check some of these boxes to make it work. I'm going to activate everything. Now we have some data coming in. You can put the mouse over these numbers to see the data streaming in real time. Let's make some noise then. If you click on one of the numbered outputs itself, for example Delta, a menu will appear. This menu displays all of the current mappings. Click Map New and then click on any enable parameter anywhere in life and it will be remotely controlled by the data leaving the output. I'm going to map this into the dry wet knob of the reverb effect. As you will notice, there is no alpha nor gamma, since mellow and concentration are derived from alpha and gamma data. Let's automatize more parameters as well. Sometimes it can be useful to home range. If selected, the device will monitor readings and use only the highest and lowest of the data stream rather than the absolute full range of the sensor. So I will try to concentrate to trigger up this knob. You can also automatize blinking in a kind of I dream of guinea kind of move. Sometimes, when the connection is not good, the data is not very accurate. I found better to make some automatizations and then to turn off the monitor to focus. Included in this plugin is a small companion device which generates MIDI notes based on an input stream. So for example, you can hone the range of the relative y-axis position and send it to the MIDI generator to create a beat by nodding your head.
For advanced users, you can use Max MSP directly with Muse. You can also send OSC data into Touch Designer and do some interesting multimedia projects. So there is a lot of space to grow with this mind interface. Well, I hope you find this interesting. Currently, it is impossible to avoid our data being extracted for profiling. But I think a great way of resistance is not to avoid notification, but to use our data in different ways. As I show here, a sound interface is a good example for creative projects, for music, for art, for magic, or anything that escapes the logic of the machine.